This has to be the most savage pal world tip since pressing R to quick stack into chests. Build your stone pits like this, delete the stairs when you don't want stone being mined. Actually busted. What? More pal world tips and tricks that you need to know. If you enjoy the video or if it helps out in any way, don't forget to leave a like, share with your friends, and comment your thoughts down below. So yeah, there's a lot of questions about how type coverage actually works in Pal World. Is there stab? How does the interactions go beyond this? Well, fortunately, we have a handy dandy Reddit post. Pal attacks are super effective against the type shown. When attacked with the corresponding element, the numbers will be shown in red, similar to a headshot to indicate super effective damage. Pals are also resistant to the same elements that they're super effective against and their own element. These numbers will be shown in gray to indicate not very effective damage. What do you mean not very effective damage exists in PAL world? What, what do you mean it's just like the reverse of the thing and its own typing? I... It, see, like you get something like this, you also look at how simplified the type chart is. Like, oh, fire's OP, it's the only one that hits two. And then everything else is pretty nice and straightforward. Nope, there's resistances. Dual type pals will follow the same rules for both of their elements. This can cancel out a weakness. For example, Peng King, being ice and water, will take normal damage from fire attacks, indicated by white numbers. Makes sense, but yeah, the dual typing does complicate that a little bit. And then WTF is STAB. STAB stands for same type attack bonus. It's a small bonus to attack damage if your pal shares a type with that attack. Fire pal will deal more damage with a fire attack than a pal of a different type using the same attack. Community has calculated this to be about 20%. Stab is in pal world. Take note. Okay, I will say gray was a poor choice to make for a resisted hit. Didn't really notice, pay attention to it that much, but yeah, there it is. I thought this was obvious, but it got a lot of upvotes on Reddit recently, so if you have any kind of pal trader, you can just put them in the box and then bring them back out, and that's going to reset their trades, so it's really good for potentially farming certain kinds of pals or looking for passive skills. So I need to get technology points to test out other things in this video, but I have none. And the thing is, people will say, oh, just farm Catrus and Wixen because they can drop high-grade technical manuals. Those are super rare. Same thing for Hoocrates and a lot of the late game pals. Like, yeah, it sounds great to get an innovative technical manual off an Anubis, but it's super rare. So you can farm Wixen with Hyperspheres over here in this volcano area because they are pretty easy to catch. And if you're in the state of the game where you're running out of technology points because you're trying to like hyper farm for some other pal saddles or technology, then yeah, you can probably be mass producing hy Hyperspheres. You can catch and butcher Wixen to try to double up on the rolls for getting the manuals, but after trying for a while, I didn't get any, so that doesn't seem like a great way of doing it. So much like many things in this game, the simplest solution seems to be the best solution that you want to farm dungeons, and if you go into the higher level dungeons, they drop the higher level technical manuals. So what you want to do is get something like a Univolt, preferably with a speedy passive perk. You can also use something like Dire Howl, and then just farm out the chests and hope you get them. I've also not had too much luck in this regard. There we go. High grade technical manual. It only gives us one point. Awesome. You can use an interactive map to find dungeons and plan some kind of dungeon farming route and just hope you kind of get the technical manuals. And then we finally get a double innovative technical manual. So four points after like almost an hour. And all of that so I could get the technology points for this tip. Dig Toys doesn't suck if you have the headband. So without the headband, this thing just does ones and barely mines. But with the headband, it does mine super crazy if you send it out on your base. However, if you just send it out from the PAL box, it's going to have the terrible one damage that doesn't do anything. So the tip is, Dig Toys actually doesn't suck as long as you have the headband. If you send it out without the headband, you're just going to think, well, what's the point? But if you have Dig Toys working in your ore base while you're AFK or doing other things, that's actually really good. So it's going to speed up the mining by a significant amount. Here's something very useful, a map with all the levels. So even though I've pretty much beaten the game up until this point, I'm in the hyper end game, I still don't really pay attention to all the levels of the areas. Also, if you're doing like another playthrough and you want to plan things out, 
this is very useful because it shows all of the different regions and then the level of the overworld pals that you find inside of that region. So yeah, go to the Reddit post, save the picture, put it in a tab somewhere, and then you have a really useful map ready to go. And following up that last tip, don't be afraid to explore into higher level areas. Sure, you probably can't catch the pals and the humans are dangerous and there's also some aggressive wild pals, but if you dodge the danger, exploring can be very rewarding and you actually don't have to be as far in the game as you might think. Like, this is a lava volcano area, so it's going to be super hot, right? Well, some areas are actually just normal temperature. You can also use lower level mounts to explore the area, and even when it gets hot, this is only level 2. Which means all you need is heat resistant armor level 2, which is the pelt armor at level 16. So yeah, you can run around this high level area just fine, making sure you're dodging the crazy people, and then picking up the rare items and chests or the spears off the ground. And while the cold area is much more dangerous, it's also much more rewarding because you can just find hyperspheres and gigaspheres in the chests for free. And I did a video on finding huge pal eggs to super accelerate your gameplay as well, so you go back to Mount City and you find a huge dragon egg, that's gonna be a Jormantide Ignis, that's level 4 kindling. You pretty much beat the game right there at level 20. Before level 20 even. And because of the fast travel points, it's not even super crazy high risk, so you have like medium risk, still kind of dangerous, high reward, and a lot of resources to find. Same thing goes for the desert. You can just rush out into the desert, find a huge fire egg, that can give you a Suzaku, and that's going to unlock some pretty crazy breeding chains. Also, the town out in the desert is really good as well for buying resources and getting some other pals. Also, here's something I covered in my daydream video, but it kind of got buried there. If you go to the boss room and you don't like the pal that you're facing, either because you're trying to catch something else, or maybe it's just too strong, there are boss pals that are just weaker because of the base stats. You can actually reset it by going a couple of rooms away and then coming back, and it's going to change the boss pal that spawns. So Tombat has now become Daydream. And we get a high-grade technical manual now that I don't need it anymore. Awesome. Actually, that's completely wrong because I will need it since I don't have all the technology unlocked. So that'll, be, that'll come in useful at some point. Let's see, what else do we have? Looks like an addendum to my breeding guide. Since I couldn't find any info on the range of heaters, I decided to try and get a rough idea as to how far away the heating effect travels. This is about it. That's as far as you can place it and still have it heat the egg. So, decent amount of distance and something to consider when trying to build like a incubation section for your base if you're doing like some kind of crazy breeding base. But at least the heater isn't too terrible. And there we go guys, another round of tips and tricks for Pal World. Did any of those tips help you out? Please comment your thoughts down below. Also, share some of your best tips and tricks that you have found. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hope you all have a nice day. Thank you very much for watching.